Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about analysing externalities through graphs. So in this video we're showing the difference between a negative and a positive externality. We will start off with the negative externality and we'll draw our downward sloping demand curve that we've seen before. But in this case what we're going to do is we're going to call that the marginal private benefit curve which is still a demand curve but just a different way of looking at it. We will also have our supply curve and our supply curve is normally upward sloping like this but again we'll just call it something slightly different and we'll call it the uh, marginal private cost curve. So in this case here where you have demand and supply represented by private uh, benefit and cost we can reach an equilibrium point where they intersect and that equilibrium point is the efficient point where we have a price derived and also down here the quantity axis we derive a quantity. So in this situation here you might have a factory which is operating in terms of production but it's also polluting the atmosphere. Now if it is polluting the atmosphere what can happen is there can be an extra social cost to this production and that's not represented here because the factory isn't paying for it so in order to represent it what we're going to do is we're going to draw a leftward shift of our supply curve our marginal private cost curve and what we're going to say is that this now represents the marginal social cost of production what that includes is both the private cost to the factory that's involved but that's also including the social cost now, the cost of pollution in this case. And if we include both of these in our diagram here, what we see is that the new equilibrium is at a higher price level, P1, so we can indicate that upwards, but also, and importantly, at a lower quantity level, and we'll call that Q1. So what happens here is, if the social cost, such as pollution here, the externality, is not being taken into account, what we have is overproduction in the market. And what this tends to cause is a deadweight loss. And we can actually measure this if we draw a vertical line up from our original uh, efficient equilibrium point. And if I fill it in here in terms of a triangle between these three points that are shown, what we see is that this point and this triangle is referred to as deadweight loss. So this is a welfare loss to the economy due to overproduction of a negative externality. And of course, if that's taken into account through maybe a taxation system implemented by the government, what can happen is you can reach an optimum efficient outcome for society. And that would be here at point A. So point A is optimally efficient for society as a whole. If we now turn to a positive externality, we can, once again, we can draw our demand curve and demand curve being downward sloping like this. But as in the previous diagram, what we actually call it is the marginal private benefit of that good. We also have our supply curve and our supply curve will be upward sloping as we've shown previously but also we don't call it supply what we're calling it is the marginal private cost of production just like before we would have an equilibrium point where both demand and supply intersect and that gives us both a price and a quantity on the market so price and quantity here so what we're going to see now with a positive externality is that for a positive externality such as maybe with a good such as education what we tend to have is the marginal private benefit doesn't reflect all of the benefits of that good so with education there's extra benefits to a person over and above the private benefit and they are incurred by society so society is more productive and is better human capital because of people being educated and in that case we represent it by calling it a marginal social benefit taking into account the additional positive externality of education here what we will have is a new equilibrium with the social benefit and the private cost and over here we will see that the price level on the market rises and importantly for us 
the quantity level increases as well. So what we tend to see with positive externality is that the good itself is underproduced. What a government can do in order to increase the production is possibly to subsidize this uh, product that exhibits social benefits. And if it doesn't, what we can see is that it causes, just like in our previous example, a deadweight loss. The deadweight loss we can represent by bringing our vertical line upwards and indicating it with a triangle here shaded in green. So once again, this is a deadweight loss to society if the positive externality is not taken into account. And in that case, we won't reach our socially optimum efficient outcome, which is indicated over here at point A. I hope you call back to Cultonomics soon. Bye for now.